بسم الله والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Sarah and I'm so excited to host you all this evening. Welcome to our fourth session of our virtual pop-up WOW Wellness of Women Retreat. Alhamdulillah. We are so excited to have you all here. The, the theme of this session is creative expression and your wow factor. This, e this evening, inshallah, we are joined by our honored guest, Sister Maryam of Art by Maryam, who is a talented young Muslim artist, mashallah. And with her amazing guidance, we will be tapping to our inner artist and learn to heal through art, inshallah. Before I introduce Sister Medium, we would like to remind everyone to have their materials handy so you can follow along, inshallah. So inshallah, ideally, you would like to have a blank canvas or a blank page of a notebook, along with any craft items like acrylic or water-based paint, brushes, or if you are choosing to draw, any drawing utensils that you would need. We encourage you to keep handy your favorite Quranic verses and other positive aff affirmations to keep you motivated, inshallah. You can get as creative as you'd like and include anything you want to be a source of inspiration. I'd also encourage everyone watching to share and like the stream as well as post any comments or questions in the Facebook comment section. And inshallah, we will do our best uh, to ask them or share them at the end of the talk, inshallah. So now I'd like to share a little bit about Sister Medium. She has a very impressive background, mashallah. Uh, Medium, also known as Art by Medium, is a self-taught artist based out of Vancouver, BC. She loves to paint with acrylics and ink, and her interests include Islamic architecture and Arabic calligraphy. Artwork has always been an outlet for her to center herself and to express her emotions. The pandemic was an opportunity to make art that would make her feel at peace and has been a source of healing for her and her following. You can get lost in her dreamy skies with iconic Islamic architecture, mashallah. We are so blessed to have her facilitate this activity so let's jump right in and please join me in welcoming Sister Maryam. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Can you hear me all well? Yes. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Um, so before I actually start painting and you know go through it all with you guys, I just wanted to um, just quickly introduce the topic and you know how art can be so beneficial to us and to our mental health. So um, the little thing we're going to make today is kind of like a 3D art piece. Um, you can see that the trees are 3D and there's a lot of snow and a little prayer rug and it looks like a little garden. Um, so the reason why we decided to go with this is because obviously the garden theme of this event and um, to kind of instill like a peaceful vibe for you guys. So um, for me, when I'm looking at a painting, the colors and um, kind of like just the layout of everything really affects my mood. So um, that's why I chose these colors. There's a lot of pinks and stuff in there and it just gives me that like calm feel and the snow too. Um, so with art, the reason why it's so good for your mental health is because it's an outlet for you to kind of express yourself. And that could be through colors that you use or it could be through what you're painting. Um, for me, it's a bit of both. So as you can see, some of the paintings in behind, it's not really clear because it's a bit dark here, but um, I like to paint landmarks or Islamic landmarks or just places. And I include colors that speak to me and colors that make me feel happy and um, at peace, basically. So there's kind of a bit of a fantasy element. And that's what's cool about um, the artwork that we're doing today. You can literally choose any colors to work with. Um, you can make your sujedi, like your prayer rug, any color, whatever speaks to you. But the idea is to make something that makes you feel at peace when you are painting it and also after so that when you look at it, it will literally bring back all the feelings that you were feeling as you were making it. Um, and I think that's really cool that, you know, art can bring back all these memories and just make you feel a certain way. It, it just has the, that special effect on you. So, um, yeah, I think I will start painting and then I will talk about it as, you know, as we go along. And um, as we mentioned, we are using um, acrylic paint. So we can start with um, adding the few, first few layers to the canvas and I'll talk you through everything and give you some art tips. So if you ever do decide to pick up art as a form of therapy, um, you will have most of the basic skills to do so. And 
you know, I'll teach you how to blend paint. I'll teach you how to um, make it stick on the canvas well. Um, I, I can teach you how to make different shapes with the, the different brushes that we're going to be using and just so much, so much to talk about basically. Um, but we'll get right to it, inshallah. So um, first I'm going to start with my pencil or watercolor pencil that I'm going to be using now just to kind of like make a layout for, for myself. Um, and obviously this is the piece that we are going to be replicating. So um, feel free if you, you know, want to change out the layout a little bit, um, you can do that. Uh, but I will just start, I'm going to make something pretty similar. I chose a larger canvas just so it would be more visible to you guys. So, so I chose um, painting a pathway because it symbolizes uh, the straight path, which is Islam. Um, and I think that is very beautiful. And, you know, at the end of the day, no matter what we're going through, um, Alhamdulillah, we have Islam and that is, you know, provides such an outlet for us um, by reading Quran, by praying. Um, there's so much that we can do through Islam to make us feel better. And that's such a blessing. Um, so yeah, that is what I'm just gonna be doing right now. So um, definitely if we're going for a more realistic look, um, the size of things does make a difference. Um, right here, I'm not really focusing a lot on, on that. Um, I have my trees that I'm gonna be adding in later. So um, they're gonna be a little bit far away. So I'm gonna make the focus on my prayer rug. So this is just all about perspective and everything. Doesn't really matter much. Um, feel free to do anything in whatever size you want. And I'm just gonna make a little landmark here for a little snowy patch. Um, and I'm going to get right into it basically because we don't have that much time. I mean, an hour actually flies by so quickly when you're doing artwork. I can sit for like eight hours and I won't even <laughs> realize until after. Um, but I just wanted to mention a few of the brushes that I'm using right now. Um, you can see them on this camera and then I'll also show you here. So um, most of these brushes are, you can be, you can find them at the dollar store, even at Michael's, but um, they just have different tips. And I think that makes it a little bit easier um, to paint different things, but you can definitely just paint with one brush. If you only have one brush, that's fine. It would, it works fine. Um, I just have different brushes for different reasons and I'll talk you through that. Um, basically the reason why we use different size brushes is for efficiency and to get things done when you you know faster the faster the better instead of using like a really small brush to paint such a large surface you might as well use a larger one so i'm going straight in with the acrylic paint i didn't add any water or anything to the brush um you could to make it more smooth i'm just feeling for it so Obviously, the more you add um, water, the more diluted it gets. But one thing that's really cool about acrylic paint is that it literally dries within a few seconds. So as I'm going to be talking to you guys, um, I can let it dry for a few seconds and even add another layer on top to make it look more professional and just better looking. So you don't have to... Um, paint in one direction. I know you might think that, you know, you have to so that it looks nicer, but the more layers that we add, the better it's gonna look. Um, so obviously, if you can still see the brush strokes, that means that you need another layer of paint. Um, usually for regular acrylic paint, you just need two coats and you'll be good to go. Um, so another thing I'd like to mention about painting is that you can see that you're doing like a lot of repetitive movements with your paintbrush. And that actually is very calming to your mind. <laughs> when you sit down and you just do the same movement over and over again, it has this like meditative effect on your brain somehow, and it just calms you. Um, so you also will know that the more stability you need in your hand, um, it would actually like regulate your breathing. So if I'm doing any fine detail, 
um, I have to make sure that I control my breathing and I breathe in to stabilize my hand and then out to kind of um, just relax in between brush, brush strokes. So that's another way that you can calm yourself. So that is my first layer here. I normally paint the sides, like the edges, but I'm not gonna do that today just because we're limited on time. You can always add the final touches later. And you don't need to be scared when you're painting with acrylics. There's no stress um, about it. And the reason why I say that is literally because you can paint over top of anything. So if I wanted to change this color or I wanted to change anything, I wasn't happy with it, I could paint on top of it. So there's no stress about acrylic painting. Um, that is why it's actually my favorite medium to work with. I have tried painting a lot with watercolors and inks, and I definitely like the fluidity of it and how abstract it can become. But if you're looking for, um, I guess, a, an easy medium to work with, that would definitely be acrylic paint. Um, just because it provides you with like such freedom it's, it's actually really fun to work with. And depending on the paint that you use, um, it will be more like higher quality, more, I don't know, more coverage basically. So you could still use dollar store paint if you um, needed to get, you know, needed to do that. I'm just gonna cover this up a little bit. So I have a layer to paint on. I just have a quick question. Where do you get your in a lot of your inspo from uh, for your paintings? And uh, that's a, a good question, actually. Um, so I lived in the Middle East for a lot of my life. Um, I grew up here, but I'm half Canadian and half um, Arab. So my mom's actually a convert. And um, I grew up here in like this kind of a culture. And I felt like I was kind of missing something. And so I, when I moved to the Middle East, I actually found a lot of my inspiration from just things around me. So the mosques, the architecture, the, um, just the Islamic, like very rich Islamic kind of culture and um, just the beauty in Islam basically. And um, my inspiration for a lot of my skies and, and stuff like that is from nature. So if I see a sky that I really like, I just take a photo of it and I end up like trying to replicate it with paint and I change up the colors based on my mood and how I'm feeling. Um, and yeah, it's mostly through uh, Islamic architecture and just inspiration through, you know, if I'm listening to a Quran or if I'm listening to an Ashid that I really like and it makes me feel a certain way, um, then I'll just paint the place that, you know, I, I feel makes me feel that way. So a lot of my art is um, obviously Medina, um, because I feel such a sense of attachment to it, even though I've never been. And usually through Quran and through Nasheeds, you know, it makes you miss, uh, it makes you miss going to Medina and makes you want to go there. And obviously we can't right now, um, because of COVID and because of different things. So it makes, it made me really want to paint a dreamy, beautiful, you know, painting of Medina and every time I look at it I miss Medina even though I've never been there so it makes me feel so calm and and just I don't know I, I can't really describe it it just that's where my inspiration comes from I guess just from from Islam so um yeah that's that's what I have to say right now I kind of get lost in my paintings as I go along and and I might feel a certain way about something. And then as I do it, um, more inspiration comes to me and then I end up changing things or, you know, um, but a lot of my skies are very fantasy-like. And if you check out my page, you'll see that I, I make pink skies, I make purple skies. Um, I make all different kinds of, of color skies. And it just puts me in this feeling like, um, just calm, calm. This is really mashallah. I definitely, first of all, would definitely recommend people to check out your Instagram page. I think it's 
art art underscore by Mariam, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Yes. Yes, awesome. exactly. You really need to check it out, everyone. It is a fantastic a display of, mashallah, her talent, mashallah, tabarakallah. Uh, Sarah, I just wanted to throw it over to Sarah, inshallah. Yes, Sister Maryam, we have a question from the audience. Um, can you wash a cam uh, canvas if you don't like the painting and want to restart all over again? Um, I wouldn't recommend washing it because um, then the actual canvas will get wet. Let it dry for a few seconds. As you can see here, um, most of my canvas is actually already dry. The wet part is is here, but all of this is is dry. So it took about a minute for um, the first layer to dry. So just give it a few seconds. And um, if you want, you can blow dry the canvas to kind of um, dry it all up. And then you can start again on top of the um, previous layer. So um, yeah, don't feel any pressure to to have to like wash it off or or for it to be perfect because you know. The whole point is actually to um, get lost in your art and just kind of see where it takes you. And sometimes, a lot of the times, actually, when something doesn't turn out the way you want it to, it's because you're feeling kind of conflicted internally. Um, I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but uh, a lot of the times that's what happens to me. And I, I'll sit down and I'll have all this pressure to, you know, make something beautiful and make something that... Um, it's just going to attract a lot of people, you know, maybe want, want to sell it to someone that would actually like it. But when you change your focus to the reason why you're painting something and you let it loose, you end up coming up with something that's way more beautiful, basically. Um, so adding any pressure to yourself while you're painting is not going to help. Just try to let loose and be free in your art and you'll notice that you... Um, you'll feel way better as you're doing it and you'll feel better after with the outcome. So no pressure to create anything that is so perfect on the first try. Um, a lot of the times, a lot of my paintings are actually, um, I go through that emotional process with each of my paintings and um, I have to sometimes step back and you know center myself and realize why I'm painting um the piece that I'm painting and you know just let myself be free and not worry about anything else um yeah anything Can else I'm any other questions uh, not yet but inshallah I will uh let you know when there are more questions inshallah sounds good um also just a quick tip for anybody who's starting to paint new um acrylic paint is actually it dries like a plastic. So what you wanna do right after you finish painting with a certain color is actually put your brush straight into a, like a cup of water. I just have a cup of water here and um, you can wipe it off on a little uh, rag or a Kleenex or anything like that, but just don't let the paint dry on your brushes um, cause it might, it might, well, it will ruin your brushes. So, um, I've now added the first layer to a bunch of the canvas and now I'm going to go in with the um, color that I want for my prayer rug and I chose blue today. Um, blue a lot of the times can represent like sadness and you know I, it's kind of known in society actually that it represents sadness um, but this type of blue has a little bit of purple in it and it actually um, makes me feel very calm so that is why I'm choosing this color today so um, speaking of that sometimes in in society uh, certain colors are known for certain things and they might not speak to you like that so feel free to choose colors that make you feel um, whatever way it is you want to portray Sorry, could I quickly jump in for a second? We have two yes. more questions. Um, so somebody asked in the Facebook live chat, how long have you been making art for? Um, so I actually grew up here most of my life, as I mentioned, and my mom would put me through a lot of um, art classes and I've literally taken classes in everything. I've done knitting, crocheting, painting. Um, I recently took up pottery and oh my god uh, drawing different types of classes uh, photography and somehow I always land on painting and um, most recently it came 
back to me um, because I took a long break from painting um, and I started getting back into it um, maybe about two years ago when I decided that I wanted to make artwork for my house. And um, in Vancouver, there's not actually a lot of artists that do modern Islamic artwork. And I wanted my house to have modern Islamic art. So I just painted it myself and I got a lot of compliments and I kind of went from there. And it was, it kind of started off as this um, real interest for Arabic calligraphy and wanting to write ayahs and hadith in, in Arabic calligraphy. And I thought it was so beautiful. Um, and I started using acrylic paint to, to paint my calligraphy. I didn't really focus on using actual columns and um, like the actual mediums that were used traditionally. And um, I quickly learned how much I love painting with acrylics. And um, then I started painting mosques and skies and galaxies and just kind of going with what I feel and, and what I enjoy. Um, and then probably the, the last year-ish since COVID started, um, I started diving into the fantasy kind of theme because I felt very trapped and, and just like I needed an escape. And so I decided to paint that escape for myself. And um, it came through vibrant colors. And now when I look at my paintings, I remember how trapped I felt, but I feel like it's just the colors and everything is they're so bright and it just lightens up my day and I just literally stare at my art all day just because of the way it makes me feel um so it kind of came about through a lot of experimenting and a lot of just trial and error and just seeing what I like um but yeah there's like for anybody who's thinking of starting out a new craft or thinking of of starting with painting um you'll be surprised how fast you can improve in doing something. And I genuinely believe that every single time I paint something, um, I, I grow so much from the current painting. And then the next time I, I paint something else, I grow from that also. And my skills just like seem to be improving so much, mashallah. So um, I yeah, think that- Adding on to that, somebody also asked, um, where would you recommend getting good quality, affordable acrylic paints? Um, so most of my, um, well, these uh, tubes, these ones are from a more specialty art store, but the Liquidex brand, the basic um, paints are um, from Michaels and you can uh, get them for, I think sometimes $7 per tube, which is, not that much considering that this tube will last you a really long time. Um, I'll just show you my paint palette right now and just show you how much I have of each paint. Um, there's not much there and this will be enough for this canvas and, and way more. I'll have a lot um, to spare actually. So um, that's another thing about acrylic paint is that it, it works so well and you, you need such small amounts to um, to make something beautiful. You don't need that much. I could probably make with, with this one tube, I could make a really, really large canvas. Um, so yeah, seven bucks per, per tube. And they also have a lot of beginner sets. So you could check out Michael's and um, maybe get like a, a dozen of them, the small tubes, and um, you could try it out and see if you actually like the consistency of the paint. Um, um, I also had a question. Yeah. Uh, you talked about like relating your art to like your emotions and how you're feeling. So mm -hmm. I was wondering, like, how can we connect it like spiritually, like to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Um, so for me, um, I, I connect it to Islam through what I paint. So um, like we're doing right now, we're painting a prayer rug. And that kind of makes you feel a sense of peace because for me, prayer is very peaceful and having a rug to, to actually pray on is so peaceful to me. Um, and that's why a lot of the times I, I paint mosques and I paint Islamic uh, landmarks because that is how you can connect. Um, you can connect yourself to the, the peace um, and to the landmark. 
Like if I'm painting Medina, for example, um, I miss it. I want to go there. I've never been there, but I feel this sense of calm um, and this like yearning to go to Medina when I paint Medina. Um, and surprisingly, a lot of people that look at the painting of Medina, um, people that have been or people that haven't been, they grow their love for Prophet Muhammad through um, looking at a painting. And so you end up um, influencing people through your art without even realizing it. And um, just surrounding yourself with, with artwork that is Islamic and um, beautiful in that way will make you feel way better. Um, and that's the reason why I started painting. Um, like I said, I, I made modern Islamic artwork for my house and I wanted something that said the name of Allah and the name of Muhammad to kind of represent Islam in my house. So when people would come over, they would see, okay, she's Muslim, you know, she has Islamic artwork on her walls. Um, you know, some, some people paint certain ayahs that make them feel a certain way. Um, and, and so, yeah, definitely what, with what you paint, um, you can definitely connect um, yourself to Islam more and, and bring that feeling of, um, you know, connect to, to the prophet and connect to um, the Quran through what you paint. Um, so yeah, it just, you really have to be mindful of what you're painting as you're painting it. And the more mindful you are, the more you'll feel connected. Um, and, and definitely the more you get into it, the more emotional each piece will become for you. Um, I always say that every, every painting that I finish is, is like a piece of me because I feel so connected to everything that I'm painting. Um, yeah, I think you'll realize that for those who are painting right now, you'll realize that after you're done, that like how much this piece is going to mean to you guys, because it's a beginning of expressing your, yourself through art. And that's very special. So I'm just adding a second layer of paints right now. And this is more than enough to, um, to cover the piece. You're not gonna need any more layers. Um, so one thing, if you guys are looking for affordable paint and maybe Michael's is not the, um, the route for you, you guys can go to the dollar store and actually pick up the, um, I think it's the Deco Art brand or the Craft Smart brand. Um, the tubes are about this big. Let's see if I can show you um, that big. And I have a few examples here. Let me just pull them out. Um, so this is what it looks like. This is the brand, Deco Art. And you can pick up these tubes for about a dollar um, and you can experiment with them all you want. So the difference is between something more higher quality and something like this is you're gonna need a few more coats with the um, cheaper brand. Um, so it's all about efficiency and just, you know, depending on how much time you have to devote to painting. Um, but yeah, uh, I personally love Liquidex just because of the texture of the paint. And I think a lot of you guys will realize that you like it a lot when you um, play around with different uh, paints. You'll figure out what you like best. I'm just going to go in with a second coat for the soil pathway. Assalamualaikum, uh, Sister Maryam. Uh, alhamdulillah, Jazakallah uh, Karen. So far, this has been a very fun activity. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to take a moment to check in with the audience and to see how everyone is finding the process so far. So, yes, inshallah, if anyone wants to let us know, what are you uh, discovering about how painting helps you as a self practice? Uh, are you feeling confident about your wow factor and the goals you've set so far? Uh, we encourage you to share any comments and pictures of the progress of your paintings, inshallah. So if anyone has any progress, they can show us. Sorry inshallah. to jump in again, but I have another question for Sister Mariam. Um, mm -hmm. So my prayer mat paint is going on really thin. So should I do multiple coats or like any tips for that? Um, yes. Yeah, so, so if you're using a brand that is more watery, um, definitely you can add a few more coats. And like I said, you can um, use a blow dryer to kind of uh, dry, like speed up the drying process. 
Um, but yeah, that's what I would recommend. I usually do that if I'm in a rush to paint something. I just have my blow dryer and I just dry between coats and then add another layer on top. So um, you can lay on the paint a little bit thicker if you feel the need to. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of a short period of time to, to paint. So um, if it's not fully drying, I definitely follow the process um, as I'm showing you and then you can hopefully work on it after um, as the coats dry. But if you um, feel like it's, you know, drying faster here, you can, you know, change the places on the canvas that you're working on basically. So that's why I started painting here. And then as this was drying, I started painting here. So um, yes, that's all I can recommend right now. Hope that helps. Okay, Sister Miriam, I don't know if you can see, we have a uh, Sister Aya sharing her progress so far. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, look at that. Can you see that? Yeah, the paint, the paint hasn't dragged yet, so I'm going to put on more layers, but. <laughs> can I see? Oh, it looks so good. MashaAllah. <laughs> it's really nice. JazakAllah. MashaAllah. So yeah. I, I actually, I like the way the shape looks uh, on the um, square canvas. For some reason, the, um, shape of canvas that you use can actually really uh just the way your eye captures or, or looks at the painting will make a difference yeah i actually had a lot of trouble finding a circle one yeah actually mine is um from the dollar store so it just depends on what dollar store you go to but um they can be found at winners also i don't know if you guys have winners where you're from obviously you do winners home sense um, yeah, so winners or the dollar store would have round canvases for very affordable prices. I think this was about three dollars. Amazing. I, 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 we have a lineup now, subhanAllah. So I'm going to let Sister uh, Zahra go first. I think she was ready to also share her progress, mashallah. Sure. Yeah, I'm still working on um, the first coat because I got a bit of a bigger canvas by accident. <laughs> it looks good. It looks good. Mashallah. I like the perspective that you guys are actually paying attention to. So you're noticing that it's thinner here and then it's wider at the bottom. So this is as if you're walking here and this is farther away from you guys. So good eye for you guys. All right. So we'll go with Sister Maria and then Sister Shaheed. Mashallah. Looking good. We, I didn't realize we had so many talented uh, artists surrounding us, mashallah, and I hope the uh, Facebook uh, family is also enjoying this activity too. Uh, we definitely encourage you to share your uh, pictures if you, you feel comfortable about your progress, mashallah. Um, that'd be great. We'd love to see it. Mashallah, Sister Mariam, amazing. Sister it Mariam, looks really mashallah. good, actually, and you guys look like you're having a lot of fun. So, yeah. if, you know, if you're a little bit insecure about what you're painting, um, it really looks really good, especially for beginner painters. And mashallah, um, I think that you'll realize that even if you do this another time after, you'll realize how much you've improved just from the first piece. So with practice, you can you can really do really well as a painter. Oh, I think Sister Shaheen, did we miss you? So subhanAllah. Sorry, it was just, uh, so I'm no artist, but um, I was just kind of doing a little bit of it. On his chair. <laughs> it looks good. It looks good. But I will say this, Sister Mariam, I, um, I love this guided session because I feel like, you know, when you're doing it and you're instructing us and then you're um, inspiring that connection, I, mm -hmm. I can feel like, you know, the positive vibes and, you know, that creativity kind of letting go when you're like, okay, hey, we're going to try this and I'm going to like, you know, dab a little, little bit here. So it's like, you know, a little bit of that limitless freedom to create and to yes. Be Yes, definitely. Um, I would say do not have any expectations for what you're going to paint and just kind of let it let loose completely. And that's how you will find um, you feel way calmer um, as you're painting. If you have any like expectations for what you're painting, you're going to find that you're very stressed as you're painting. So just let it loose and just let it go. I usually let, let myself um, like I make myself a nice coffee and I have a candle lit right here and I put on some like nature um sounds and i just like fully immerse myself in it 
Um, All so right. my our, got our home. Team, Sister Mariam, when you come, is uh, we'll do that next time too. We'll create that ambiance, inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. Um, I just wanted to continue with the painting just because I know we don't have that much time. So I'm just going to add some snow um, to the painting as it's drying. It's not fully dry for me right now. You can see there's a lot of wet spaces. You can probably see the glare. Um, so it is not fully dry, but I'm going to start adding the snow um, because we can kind of add layers on top of what we're doing without it fully being dry. Um, so I'm using, a, a, it's actually a messed up brush that is very old, but it has this um, texture kind of to it that makes it easy to paint snow with, but you could also go with a sponge if you had one um, to paint your snow. And I'm just gonna add it in like little areas, just like that, just by dabbing. And if you have um, even a regular brush, like the one that you're using for the rest of the piece, you can just dab it like, uh, I guess at a 90 degree angle um, on the canvas and you'll realize that it makes a different texture um, on your canvas. And the reason why I chose to add snow is actually because for me, snow is super peaceful and it just makes me feel really calm. And also it's very fitting for the theme, the winter theme that we're in right now. Um, so I'm just adding it to different areas of the pathway. And I'm not gonna add it to everywhere because I want it to look like it just um, recently started snowing. So also because it's a bird's eye view of what we're painting. Um, we're not painting, you know, like snow falling. We're just gonna be painting um, the bird's eye view of it. So this is where I'm gonna put my trees after. So I'm going to just paint a little bit of a snowy patch here. Are you guys um, painting snow yet or is it your canvas still not fully dry? Can you also like flick some of the white paint onto your canvas to create more of a dispersed snow effect or? Yes, you could. Um, so if you're planning to do that, you would basically just flip it like a, um, like a toothbrush, basically. I can try to do that right now and see how that looks. If I don't like it, I can just paint on top of it. So I just added a little bit of water to my brush and that makes it easier to flick the paint because um, paint is actually pretty thick, so I'm just going to do that. So my sorry, little... I had, sorry, I had yes, another question. Um, mm -hmm. I was wondering, do you have like a certain color that you drift to towards painting, like a favorite color that you um, find yourself like painting with all the time? And you're like, oh, I didn't even like know I was using this color. I actually don't. Um, feel like I have a favorite color because I, I go through moods when I'm painting. Um, typically, my paintings take about three-ish weeks to finish if they're larger scale or um, even if they're really detailed pieces. So I, I, I feel like my mood must fluctuate a lot <laughs> and I choose a different color um, for almost every single piece that I, I paint. Um, it's kind of like, you know, I'll, I'll go to, um, I'll go shopping or I'll go to the art store and I'll see a color that really draws me to it. And I'll just, you know, come up with an idea and start painting with it. Um, that that kind of happened with this peachy color. Here, let me just show you. It's a very like sunsetty peachy color. And I got inspired to paint um, a beautiful view of Palestine. It's the second painting that's there on the wall can't really see it but um, this color actually inspired the painting so um, it colors just kind of come and go for me I don't have anything that is particularly you know my favorite color but I do find that um, I really like working with vibrant colors I know that neutral is kind of the thing that's in and a lot of people you know when I, I make polls on Instagram and I say what should I paint next with what color and they are always you know saying go with pastels or go with like like more chill colors. And I honestly don't find that sense of 
um, I guess I don't I don't get that that happiness when I look at my paintings if they're too bland or neutral. I like the vibrancy and the colors, and I think that that really like attracts me. And if I ever see any art or anything that's like super colorful, I'm instantly like attracted to it, and I want to go and look at it up close. So. But definitely colors can be um, can can be expressive of your emotions, basically. So um, I painted something a while back that had it was a, a view of Turkey with a bright pink sky. And everybody's like, but the sky is never that bright pink. And I'm like, I don't really care because it just makes me feel really happy. And when I look at the painting, it just makes me feel like uplifted and, and, and just makes me feel great when I look at it and the color just spoke to me and I just ended up painting with it for yeah for a while actually I did a few paintings with that color it just made me feel very happy okay um did you guys see the effect of the flicking on the canvas for me it's kind of like very very subtle um, droplets of, of paint all over. It kind of looks like snow just fell. I think it turned out really nice. Um, I actually have a, a toothbrush for this that I use for flicking paint because um, I paint stars quite often. Um, but yeah, I already had the paint on the brush. So um, I think I am going to move on to starting to paint the little flowers and then I'll go back to painting the rug. Um, yeah, so um, I could use this brush to paint the flowers, but I'm just going to switch my brush to something a little smaller. And I actually have never painted flowers before this project. Um, I think that they're really beautiful and I've drawn them a lot, but I haven't ever painted them. And I think that I actually came up with shapes that look like flowers. So yeah, you can always improvise with um, what you're painting. I think that a lot of the times people are so into painting all the detail. Um, like if you're painting a, 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 from an image, from a reference image, you think that you need to capture everything. But um, a lot of my paintings, if you look up close, they're very, very blurry. And you don't see that up like when you're far away from it. But um, so yeah, there's no pressure to make a perfect flower um, when you're looking at it from far. Even little like blobs look like flowers. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. It's getting kind of dark here. But I'm basically using um, just a thinner brush to kind of blob the paint in clusters wherever I want my flowers to be. And definitely the more um, layers I add to, to these flowers, the more they're going to pop at me. Sometimes the first layer of paint kind of sinks into the canvas. So if you want it more vibrant, you can just add another layer of paint. So pink, a lot of the times when I paint with it, it makes me feel very like like a loving, caring feeling. So it's very peaceful for me, the color pink. The last time I used it was to paint um, something for my niece when she was born. It just made me feel like so, you know, it's such a loving color. Okay. And I'm not even gonna wash my brush right now. I'm just gonna go straight into adding like a little bit of blue flowers. Like Sister Maryam, I just wanted to share my progress. I'm really behind, so I tried my best here. Mashallah. I'm trying, but I still have to add the snow and everything. Yeah, it, it's kind of hard when there's not much time to like let you be free in your art. <laughs> I'm kind of like rushing through it. Um, yeah, and I paint, yeah, inshallah. I paint really fast. So if you're, you know, finding that um, I'm going through a step too quickly, just definitely stop me. 
No, I, alhamdulillah, it's, your pace is really good. I'm just uh, really slow. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. The more you do it, the more um, you'll realize that your speed is picking up. Yeah, alhamdulillah. I think that the um, flowers are ending up really cute on this canvas. Definitely um, looking back at the older piece that I worked on, the colors, um, I wasn't really happy with the colors of the of the prayer rug. And I think that this color is, it, it's more peaceful to me. So I'm really excited to see how we can lay, um, lay on more layers of paint and make it look more peaceful. Inshallah. Uh, sister, I also wanted to just let you know we have 10 minutes remaining. So inshallah, we'll be wrapping okay. up. Okay, let's get on it then. Yes. <laughs> Okay, um, so I'm just going to make some little centers for my flowers for some of them. Okay. Since we don't have much time, I'm going to go straight into pray, the prayer rug, because um, I wanna show you guys how you can do that. Um, so I think I'm gonna start with the tassels at the edge. Right now I'm using a thinner brush. With whatever brush you have, you can um, use it to kind of make the shapes that you need. You could use the long um, flat brush to kind of make tassels by just using that kind of a motion. I might do that in a second if I don't like the way it's turning out. So I'm just making like a border with a white paint. It's getting really dark in here. So if you can't see anything, let me know. I'll try to turn on more lights. So far, I think these tassels look really nice. And it's such a, a simple movement. And if you're finding that it's really hard for you to get the angling right, flip your canvas and move it as you see fit. Um, sometimes painting can get a little straining physically. And so you wanna make it easy for yourself. So just move the canvas if you need to. So I could have probably added even another layer of the brown paint. I think I'll go back and fix that later when I'm when I'm not on the phone call with you guys. Um, and now I'm going to kind of make a nice shape for the top. I think I'm going to go with pink. So depending on what your prayer rug looks like at home, you can kind of replicate this or if you have a really nice prayer rug that you think looks really nice. You could copy the way it looks, but most of them look like this. So you'll notice that it, it may, you might hear that my breathing is kind of deeper and slower. Um, like I said, when you're painting fine detail, you'll realize that your breathing is changing. So if you pay attention to that, it can actually be more calming for you. I think I'm gonna paint the entire center pink. it looks nice. 
So this is gonna need another layer of paint, but I'll let it dry. And I just wanna work on some shapes at the top so it looks more traditional. I'm really attracted to the traditional look of prayer rugs. So I'm going to kind of make it look like there's a lot of swirls here by just moving my hand freely in like multiple directions. And then when you look at it from far, it would actually look like there's a lot of intricate detail there, even though there's really not. So it's kind of like an illusion to the eye. You can make it look like there's so much texture when there really isn't. It's just a lot of blobs of paint. So I added a little too much paint there. I can just remove it with my brush. Okay. So you can do more detail to the prayer rug. Um, right now, because we don't have that much time, I thought that I would just at least talk you through um, adding these trees. So these are from Michael's. I got two of them for like $6 or something, just to add like a, a 3D effect to the painting. Um, so I actually just used a hot glue gun. I won't heat it up right now, but I'll talk you through it. Um, and just glued them in the proper placement to make that 3D effect. I think it, it turned out really nicely here. You can see how it looks. Um, so yeah, and you could definitely add a lot of more flowers to make it more um, fitting to what you are feeling and the vibe that you want. You can add so many different colors of flowers and add more snow if you feel like it add more layers of paint to perfect it. Um, but yeah, I know we don't have that much time. So if you guys have any more questions or anything that you'd like me to talk about while I have you for the next five-ish minutes, um, definitely ask the way. I'm just going in and fixing areas that I feel needed to be fixed while this dries. I can't add any more detail right now to it because it is too wet. So inshallah, everyone, uh, if you want to share your progress, you can um, uh, share in the Facebook comment section and just let us know or anyone on here on the Zoom can share your progress so far, inshallah. And how did... Um painting make you feel? Did you guys feel like it was a little bit of a stress relief? Was it like calming? For me, it was yeah. very calming. Yeah. I'll just say that. I'm not a painter, but I enjoyed it. Like it doesn't, it doesn't look like, <laughs> like everyone else's, but I was really calm and it was really fun to do. So mm -hmm. I'm too. glad you guys enjoyed um, it. Um, I think that this can be a, a start for you guys to a new hobby. If you guys are interested in doing something for yourself, um, you don't even have to paint every day, but if you need to center yourself or just have like a calm evening, you can gather your friends and just sit down and, you know, come up with a theme and you can paint together. It's uh, especially fun for Eid and Ramadan time. Um, so yeah, definitely pick projects and start working at them and, You'll notice the more you do it, the better you'll get. And if even if you're not per se talented, um, you can definitely grow and, and become really good at this um, hobby, I guess. And maybe you'll be even better than me, inshallah. So 
Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And I'm really glad that um, I could talk a little bit about this and, you know, um, hopefully, you know, this helps provide you guys with like an outlet for your mental health and, you know, maybe the, just notice the colors that you're choosing and notice the themes that you're working with and, and be very intuitive with what you're doing and, you know, pay attention to how it's making you feel. And it, it definitely will help you cope with a lot of things like it does for me. So. Inshallah. Um, if anyone else wants to quickly show um, us their progress, can take a look at it, inshallah. Looks awesome. You actually painted the snow. Oh, Looking good. Inshallah, to what it's That's my answer. I didn't. <laughs> inshallah. Oh, I'm definitely calling out Sister Shaheen. Y'all, oh, Maria, mashallah. Maria, mashallah. You guys are too funny. No, it wasn't that that great, but you know, I think I need to go back and touch it up a bit. <laughs> Looks good. Well, yeah, an hour is honestly not enough time to finish right. everything, but at least we um, talk through it and definitely continue painting if you have the time um, and just get immersed in it and have like no pressure and see where you go with it. But I think that um, I'm really looking forward to actually seeing what you guys end up with and definitely share your images and um, I'll look into that. We'll send you a collage, Sister Marie. <laughs> Sounds good. Inshallah, <laughs> um, we're drawing to the end of our session. Jazakallah khair and Sister Maryam, it was a great pleasure to host you this evening. Uh, this was re a very insightful activity. And now, inshallah, we have a great creation to motivate us to pri prioritize when it comes to um, our wellness. So what a cool takeaway, alhamdulillah. Uh, inshallah, so thank, you, thank you so much for having me. Jazakallah khair and sister. All right, thank you all for joining us this session. And we make dua to Allah that our session be beneficial to everyone. Ameen. Uh, before we sign off, please make sure to tune in with us tomorrow for our final evening, inshallah, at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You won't want to miss it. We are going to make an we are going to have an awesome panel on health and wellness. So make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram, inshallah. You can see on the screen that we have some exciting sessions lined up. Jazakallah khairan everyone and inshallah we will see you tomorrow. Have a great night. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>